we'll record this and uh, let me make that bigger. And then I'm going to get into some pictures here. Oh, well, there we go. So I'm just going to find all my pictures on the digital cushion. Just a second, I got to plug in something. Nope. No. Well, my uh, I have an exterior hard drive. Doesn't seem to want to turn on. No. No. Oh, there it goes. Okay. All right. So this thing. Uh, let's see. If I was to close up all this, this one. Oh no, don't want to do that. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. I just want to. Well, I guess I can't reduce that. Just a second, and I'll I'll do sharing here in a second. Start screen share. Sharing whiteboard. Um, this might take me a second because, of course, they changed it. So that I can't just share everything at once. Just share the whole screen. I'm going to write them a nasty letter. Because what they've done is they've just made it really difficult. Um, they've made it difficult now to do this whole presentation. See, it used to be that you could you could click into this screen share and then it would it have a uh, share the whole, uh, your whole screen, whatever you put on your screen is what you can share. Now you have to pick a specific screen to share. And this is really uh, aggravating the snot right out of me. So I'm probably going to drop them. Because uh, I just don't, I just don't need this. It's this is this whole thing's difficult enough without them making it difficult. This happens every time you get a program that works, then some idiot comes along and changes it so that it makes it harder to use or it isn't as good to use or something like that. So let just a minute here. Let me try and figure out how I'm going to do this. Um, Maybe this will work. Okay, we'll see if this will work. Okay, do you see anything there? Yep. Okay, now if I, let's see, maybe this will work. Maybe it won't be too bad. If I, um, are you still seeing files there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, um, all right, good. So good, I've got so I can uh, share this. Okay, um, let's see, where do I want to start to be with the explanation? Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna study the digital cushion, which is part of the foot, not part of the capsule. Um, and, uh, its companion would be the frog, which is part of the capsule. And the frog um, grows from underneath the digital cushion. The uh, let me find a picture here. Just a minute there. Um, now let's see. Oh. That's not the right one. Let me get in the thing before I start explaining. Um, well, gotta move stuff here. Um, view. 
that. Okay, there we go. Alrighty then. Okay, so the frog, here we go. This is a bunch of pictures I have here on the digital cushion, but before we look at that, um, let's see. We we'll want to look at a whole foot first because what I want you to remember here is that you, you are primarily first and foremost dealing with a whole foot on that horse. Um, now it is composed of parts. It has a digital cushion, it has the coffin bone, it has the lamina, it's covered with skin. You know, all of the coriums that grow the hoof capsule are skin. Um, we'll look at inner foot first. Thanks for a second. ABC of two, H, I okay. We find inner foot. Hold on. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what all I have here for inner foot. Okay. Okay. So here's the inner foot, and it is all one unit. There's a different one. This was one of my dissections here. Um, now, if they seem like they're a different shape, it is only because that foot would have had a distorted hoof capsule that, that deformed it. They all have the basic, the same basic shape ultimately. And so um, you have what is correct, but then you can have something that's incorrect due to how the hoof capsule pulled um, pulled on that inner foot and changed the back of it, pulled it down. Like here, um, a good inner foot would not be pulled down like this. See how that was pulled down there? Okay, now see this piece right here? That's a frog corner. That should not be pulled down like that. This coronary band that twists like this should be straight over like this. See? Straight out this way, not curved down. Linda, do you have a specific picture up? Huh? I don't see what you're pointing at. Really? Oh, this. No, sorry. This thing, see? Now, see, I'm going to have to just keep uh, going back and forth because these guys mess this up. How's that? You see something now? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So let's go back then. Sorry. Okay. Okay, what this shows here is how inner feet get distorted and deformed. Right there. When you trim the heels out, um, because they're, and, and see this one also had some distortion. This one has way less distortion. Here, um, you see how straight the coronary band is here? And you see how, how the heel is defined right there? Um, it did, this did have some distortion. So this part of the heel buttress corium is bent under the foot because this was a horse that I had been trimming for about six months when I was still trimming the heels out. And uh, then later, after I uh, realized that was going on, and because I made plaster caps of these feet, I could look at the feet and tell what I had been doing and how this coronary band was being pulled down to the ground slowly. Well, look at one that isn't. Now, again, there's a deformed one. Uh, this coronary band here is not supposed to be bent down like that. And the heel is not supposed to be slanted like that. Ideally, um, move all these um, and, and 
okay here. So this should go like that. This heel should go like this. More like that. See, but when you turn the heels out, it deforms the back of the coronary band, it pulls this cartilage down, and it crushes your heels forward. See, I and see, so you wind up having not hardly any buttress here because this is supposed to be lifted up here, see? So you would actually, these, these, this heel buttress corium that holds, that grows the heel buttress right here, they're bigger, way bigger than what you think to a solid piece of wall. See, right there. Um, and that is what stabilizes the whole hook capsule and supports the whole back of the foot. See, it would support this, this coronary band here. It would support it up in the air. And then this cartilage would not be pulled down like that. It would be like this. See, like that. The coronary band should be straight, just like that. Never any curves. Okay, you see. Uh, so undo that. Okay. Okay, this foot is off my mirror and it is deformed. No, maybe it's not off my mirror. Maybe it's off another horse. Looks like hers though. Nope, nope, this isn't off my horse. Okay, but it looks like a lot like my mirror's foot. Okay, you see the cartilage back here? This is deformed. Ideally, this horse, the uh, coronary band would go straight up like this. The cartilage here would be much bigger and straighter um this this is a deformed foot but see they don't know these foot feet are deformed that's the whole thing they don't realize that they're trimming the heels out of these horses and that as this happens because um the heel of the hoof capsule and the frog and everything is attached to the foot as you are incorrectly trimming it it is actually getting smaller and pulling the foot in with it at the same time so again, the foot itself is one unit. So here I did a deal. Which of these would be a good foot? Um, really none of them. You know, they've all got, they've all got issues. They've all been pulled down. See that? I didn't know that at the time though. Um, so I thought, I thought, I can't remember which one I thought was good, but there was one here I thought was good, but it wasn't. Because I, I learned um, just how much this coronary band can be pulled down. Okay, now, um, this, this, um, well, you can see here on this foot, this is pretty dried up and stuff like that, but you can see how big the heel buttress on this horse would have been right here. See, there's the heel right here. And this horse I was, this is the same horse I was trimming the heels out of, and it did pull the back of his foot down like this. But um, he still had a semblance of, of a good foot internally in that this part of the coronary band that grows that big chunk of buttress had not totally been pulled under the foot yet. But you see how this frog sticks out? See, none of this should be here. But you don't know that because once the foot has been distorted by the distorted capsule, and then the horse dies, and then you take the capsule off, the foot is kind of frozen in that position. Ideally, um, all of this would be clear up here and then this heel, instead of being pushed forward like that, would be much straighter and have much more definition. And this is my mare's feet. And she, see, she shouldn't have had 
this, she had hardly any buttress because this had all been pulled down and under and she had had contracted heels at one point, and different things like that. But I restored a lot of her foot before she died, but it still, still just wasn't right. Now what you see here on this is um, how this whole cartilage can be pushed forward. Now, I'm gonna draw on it here. Um, where's the annotate? There it is, okay. Okay, so here's the coronary band. Now, ideally that, that coronary band should go clear up like this and like that. And then that, should, of course, this ain't very good drawing. That heel should have real definition to it. See, it shouldn't be, here's the heel now being pushed forward. This heel should have real definition and depth to it. And then right here is where your heel buttress from the hoof capsule grows. Right here. Okay. Oh, right here. Um, but what I did, I didn't even realize what I was doing when I, when I did this dissection and I did all this, I didn't know anything about how the heels got trimmed out yet or how it pulled the cartilage down. Um, but here you can see um, how much I've been able to push, push the coronary band. This literally happens that when you're trimming the heels out, the hoof capsule gets smaller and it pull, it can pull this whole area down and under the foot like that. Look what it does to, here, I'll, I'll mark the coronary band. Okay, right, so here's the coronary band that grows the hoof capsule. Okay, now again, how is that supposed to be? This this whole part that goes down like this is supposed to be, well, it's supposed to be up like this. See there? And so this whole part of the foot and everything, this cartilage here, instead of being down like this, it's supposed to be more like that. Now that's not a very good drawing, but just a minute. Yeah. It would be more, eh. Just a minute. Undo. I'm trying to figure out how that would be. Probably up here, because that's really pulled down. So. Yeah, this heel here. We bring that back up here. This ain't, I'm, this ain't a very good idea, drawing, but you get my drift here. The, the heel would be more like that. There we go. That, that would be more like what the foot would be. Okay, so this, what this does is this shows you how this whole, see, there's only bone. The only bone you have is in the foot right to here. Okay, so all of the rest, it's probably a little further than that, but um, so all of this is fat and cartilage. So all of this can be pulled down like that. Let's see. Okay, so now we're going to do red to small. Okay, now. You have to think of everything that's here. Okay, so that's the coronary band that grows uh, the hoof wall. And so you see how much of the base of your foot you're taking away from the horse. This is why you get quarter cracks too, because you have hoof wall that's growing down like that, but then you've got other hoof wall that's growing like that. See, and they're growing into each other when they're supposed to be in alignment. But the part I want you to look at here, just a minute here, is right here. You see this, this right here, this area right here, this thing, 
That's the prong, choreo. See how it bulges it out? It, it, that's not even supposed to be showing. If this was pulled all the way back up here, that would suck that right up in the foot under there. You wouldn't even see it. Um, but this is what deceives people because a, a false low heeled foot is formed right here. Very thin though. It won't have, you know, hardly any sole at all. And it'll have what looks like a, a poochy frog, but there's actually no frog padding on it. What you're seeing is a lot of times it's just real cornified uh, uh, frog corium with just maybe a little bit of frog. Um, what you want is you want all this clear up here, like so. Okay, and that frog's, you know, Ray up here, and then you want like two inches of, or well, a good inch thickness of frog itself growing down here, not the frog corium pulled down here. So let me un undo this here. But this just shows you how much the back of that foot can be manipulated. Now that one's better. See, so here's something I've just, uh, a realization. I, I mean, it's like something that comes into your head all the time. It's right in front of your face, but you're not seeing it. About coffin bone rotation. Um, you'll look at these x-rays. I think we have some x-rays on uh, the one of the Facebook pages, too, of severe laminitis. And you'll see where the back of the foot, you'll see the wings of the coffin bone. Just a minute, let me annotate. Get right. Okay, so the coffin bone is about to here. And this area has been pushed clear from back here up to there. And so when you're looking at an x-ray, you'll see the coffin bone. Well, then you always want to look at the distance from where you see what may, may look like the bulb there between the bulb and the coffin bone. And you're going to notice on different horses, you're going to notice a whole difference in the whole area of the back of his foot. Because see, this does not show up on x-rays. Now, what's on the inside of there? Also, the digital cushion. Say, what you've got is you've got a layer of skin and then you've got the digital cushion. Just a minute. Um, and so you'll see the ends of the cotton bone and then you'll see just like the bulb right there. Now, here's the deal. This frog and all this is supposed to be up here, right? What do you think happens when you take all this and you push it forward under this area right here? Anybody answer, anybody answer that? If I, it let's pushes say- pushes the coffin bone out. Yeah, it's gonna push the coffin bone up, isn't it? So do you see how the back of that foot could cause that coffin bone to rotate. You know, they talk about coffin bone rotation, right? Now you've got the hoop capsule on this thing. Just a minute. Um, let me get another color. Okay, let's just use that. You've got a hoop capsule on here. Okay. And this, you're trimming this out constantly. Um, it starts to put a lot of pressure on the toe because what's happening is as this is pushing up under here and pushing that up, well, what's, what is it doing to this part? Can you tell me? It would push this part up. Now this is on, now there's a bone that this is on right here. Okay. Short pastor bone, that's not a very good one. Here. Okay, so if it pushes this up right here, then what does it do to this and to this? 
pushes it down. Right. Yep, so push, pushing that down. Meanwhile, the capsule itself is being pushed. The, the leverage on it is going this way. Ta-da, laminitis and copy mode rotation. See what I mean? Um, so they're always talking about, oh, the DDFT, how that, that's making the coffin bone rotate. I don't think so. I mean, it probably doesn't, doesn't uh, help it any when all this becomes detached in here and you got the wall coming out this way, you know, and, uh, and then this being pushed down that way and that being pushed up that way. And then you keep trimming the heels up and they, this, all this foot here just keeps being pushed more and more forward and up like that. So that eventually, well, there's different things that can happen like, uh, just a minute here. Uh, let's see. There we go. Okay. And that is that uh, these walls, they can get a start to go like that, you know, and you get what's called the laminar wedge in there. Cause see the wedge shape, like so. Um, so coffin bone rotation when that happens, or um, the wall can respond in a in a different way, where um, the more it, will, it just stays connected. You keep, it keeps a tight connection there, okay? But then the more this is pushed up and the more this rotates that way and the more this is trimmed out, next thing you know, you got a foot that's shaped like this, which we call a can foot. You know, so there's, there's different things like that can happen. Now, another thing that can happen is this part of the foot can decide, now this can stay attached in this part of the capsule, or it can become detached. If it becomes detached, then this part of the foot will stretch way up like this. And what you'll see is uh, it'll become detached and it'll let loose and it'll stretch way up. Let's see, here's your foot. And then you'll see this really weird looking, real stretched periopal skin way high like this. So sometimes that happens too. Sometimes the capsule cannot hold on to the back of the foot because, okay, this is all cartilage and fat. It does not want to be pushed down like that. And uh, the whole time it's being pulled down like this, it's pushing against it. That's why we, we need to make that work for us when we're doing corrective trimming and realizing that most of the time, this whole foot is loaded under pressure and it is wanting to return to where it's supposed to be. Um, that's why uh, one of the, th well, see, there's this thing, and that's why doing this deal also never works. Cutting the heels down, to where you got this, never, that never works. Because you ain't got a right foot to do that to. See? Uh, I don't know how to explain why that doesn't work, but it does not work. Um, first of all, you would uh, really be pulling the hairline down and the whole back of the foot down even more if you took the heels off. A lot of times, like I, I can't rotate this picture right now, but what you have here is um, this, this would be straight. Well, maybe I can, just a minute here. Um, let's see, I'll open something else here. Um, snag it editor, editor. Well, then I have to change everything to this stupid thing. Well, anyway, oh, well, I didn't do that. Let me undo this drawing here. 
Okay, I'm not gonna, I was gonna put this in uh, a program and rotate it so you can see, you're just gonna have to use your imagination. Okay, this would be what the horse is standing on right here. If you rotated the foot this way, okay, and stood the horse up, okay, it's gonna have a can foot that looks like that. And so the hairline would be straight across almost. Okay, this is what that foot's gonna look like with that horse standing. Um, and so another thing that happens is uh, you have to be careful because it tips this uh, short pastern bone right here forward and you can get a horse that wants to knuckle over and cannot stand on the bottom of his foot at all. See, because the horse wouldn't, see like right here, we see the foot looks flat, but when this horse is standing up, his foot's like this. See? That's how he's really standing, because you have to remember, um, and that's what you have to keep, because you can't lower it, because then you're pulling the back and bottom of his foot down. Um, so you've got to come up with a way that can start releasing the back of this foot um, so that that all this will come back up to where it's supposed to be and grow a correct hoof capsule and good luck with that that's pretty hard because that's what i've been doing on my pony and, uh, it's really difficult once this stuff here really gets pulled under the foot it's really difficult to get all this to come up back to where it's supposed to so let's put it all down. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, see the coffin bone ends right there. That's the whole foot. And that's what now this foot was all dried out. I had it in salt. Um, and then it turned to leather. So that just goes to show you that the foot is skin. See, skin covering parts. So that's how uh, this much of the foot can be compressed into a smaller capsule. This is where the coffin bone ends right here. See there? So that is literally what is happening to these horses to one degree or another. See there. You know, slowly over time, as that hoof capsule is made smaller by incorrect heel trimming, it pulls the foot into this form. This is exactly what's going on with my pony. Um, and interesting, I did this dissection before I ever had my pony. And I did all this, but I had no idea what I was doing. I was just messing around. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. I had this these feet and I, I was trying to preserve them and keep them so I could use them and uh, so I thought well I'm gonna put it in salt and borax and see what happens and so it softened it up enough to where I could move it like that not knowing that years later I would find out that this is actually what's happening to a lot of these horses to all horses to one degree or another, the whole back of their foot is being distorted and destroyed. So this is this would be my pony's foot. But it, it's getting better. This is starting to come up a little bit. You know, I've been trying to figure out for a long time how to get that to change once it's really pulled under like that. See that frog grin? It's not supposed to be like that. Okay, that's supposed to be up here. Now, I was noticing something the other day. Now, um, now this. See how this is pulled down like that? Okay, here's the coronary band pulled down like that down that's not supposed to be like that at all this is supposed to be clear up here 
clear up here. And then you're supposed to have a real definition between the bulbs, like that. Um, okay, not supposed to look like that, not at all. Um, so just imagine, this is supposed to be way up in the foot and it's supposed to be supported and it's supposed to be protected by up to an inch of frog and there's supposed to be two inches of frog growing from between the bulbs to the ground. And instead what you have is you have this situation where you're pulling all of this down to the ground to be pummeled as the horse walks. This, what they teach in barefoot trimming is literally doing this to the feet. See, I really didn't, I was just messing around. I was like, well, I'll take pictures here doing that. I didn't know that years later, I'd be able to look at this and go, wow. See, this is not supposed to be here on the foot like that at all. Um, anyway. Okay, so I'm going to turn it, put it on something else. Let's hold on. Um, just a second. Let's see where I want to go. Um, Okay. okay, these are all inner foot pictures. Maybe, maybe primarily we're just going to let maybe look at inner foot pictures. Maybe, um, let's just do that for now. Okay. Okay, so I got to find where I'm at and start sharing again. I'm lost. Just a second. Oh, there we go. Share. Um, okay. So this is all um, a file on inner feet. Okay, so uh, what you see here, this is the only solid part of the foot. The whole rest, the heels here, everything, every bit of the rest of the foot is soft cartilage and fat. In fact, most of it is fat, you know, adipose fat, like whale blubber. Um, now there's your frog stay. Um, and I was in the process of trimming the, the feet out of this horse. Uh, I can look at his feet now and I remember how great his frogs were and everything. And now I know what I was doing to his feet. Um, I didn't kill him, though, but he died of bad, bad colic. So, um, but that's not to say I couldn't kill some. You know, thank God I didn't kill any, but I'm going to tell you right now that uh, I could have killed my pony if it wasn't for the fact that I, that I just hung on it, hung on it, hung on it, hung on it. I'd have had to put her down, and it would have been all my fault. Um, you know, same thing with my mare, same thing with my gilding. I uh, trimmed him into mechanical laminitis at one point. Uh, that was when I first started really studying the foot and trying to figure out what was going on. And, and that was because I was uh, rasping from the top. Okay, so the inner foot. So I did, of course, I, I just did some... Uh, this is just some of the research I did to try and figure out, see, try and figure out what's going on. From reading Gene Olvenek's hoof research to trying to understand what was in that hoof capsule. See, they don't have no 30 degree hairline. No, clear down here. 30 degree hairline. See, there's your 30 degrees. 
this was here had about a uh, what is that? Uh, whatever that is, 10, 11, 12 degree hairline. That wild horse. Okay, so this is one of my dissections. That's the same one you first saw. Um, before I cut everything off of this foot here. But you can see the whole back of this foot, the cop and bone ends right about here. You can see that the whole back of this foot can be moved and manipulated. So, you know, I was, uh, and I realized when I did that on that foot that, that that's when I started going on to the fact that these feet are the same as wild feet. That all these horses have the same inner foot. They ain't no 30 degree hairline here. Got about a, a 12 degree hairline. Okay, now here's a perfect foot. This would have been a perfect foot right here. Um, as far as an inner foot. Now, this up here, again, I didn't, un at that time, I didn't know about the heel buttress and I had trimmed the heel out of this horse. Look at the difference here. Look at where the coronary band grows right here. Look at how straight it is. And then look at how the heel buttress grows from it. How, look at the definition of the heel here. See? Okay, even with it taken off, now this, this part here just goes around the foot. But you can see the definition of the heel. Um, now up here in this foot, this was one of my dissections. You can see where I was pulling the whole back of the foot down. See how the cartilage is pulled like that? Now the uh, coronary band right to here is still straight. What I didn't see, I didn't realize what was going on here at the time. I didn't see the difference. I missed this right here. See, this is all pulled down and under. This piece right here should be up here. You know, up here, like this. Like this piece here. I did not see that. What's the, what's the copper, what is that? I guess I did this one in 2015. I didn't learn about the heel buttress till 2016. Okay, so this is a, a dissection I did where um, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here, you know. But again, here's the inner foot. But the cartilages are deformed and distorted because it doesn't look like it. Look at the foot. But I, you see the way that curves down like that? That's not supposed to be that way. Um, let me show you a picture. Uh, well, I'll show you this picture for a second here. Um, okay, see how straight that is there? It, you're not supposed to have any curvature at the back at all. Now this doesn't look quite right the way I got this picture taken. Um, but he's actually got a much bigger uh, cartilage in that. But uh, this is all supposed to be very, very straight. Let me go back. Okay. So the more you trim out the heel, the more you're going to start to see this all curve down here and reduce the size of the capsule going that way. Okay, see? How this is pulled down wasn't supposed to be like that. But like I say, I did not know that at the time. I thought that's the way it was supposed to be. See, but this was the result 
of me incorrectly trimming the heels. This all should have been straight up like that. See that? Not supposed to be like that. See that? See how it pulls the cartilage down? Not supposed to be like that. See the frog? How that frog's pushed forward? Not supposed to be like that. See the heel definition? Not supposed to be like that. Supposed to be, this whole area of the foot is supposed to be up here. What's Linda? That? Yeah. Yeah. With that frog, see how it curves underneath because it's being pushed from the back? Would you assume, like, I guess that's a good way to show that the bars would also curve up into, you know, how they become quite bent? Yes, absolute. In fact, uh, a number of years later, I still have the hoof capsules and all these feet, you know, and I was looking at the hoof capsule and the bar had become disconnected from the back of the uh, uh, from where it's supposed to be connected forward here and had actually pushed up into the foot like that. You figure if you bend that, right? You're bending that bar too, right? So you're bending that bar literally up into the bottom of their foot. Pretty horrible, huh? That must be very painful. Plus, I mean, this is the foot. The capsule is just like their shoe. You know, it's supposed to form fit their foot, not contort and pull and torture their foot into a distorted form. Yeah, see, all in the wrong spot. This is not supposed to be here. It's supposed to be, let's see, where would it be? It would be clear up here. Clear up here. This part of it anyway. Um, just a minute here. Let's see, where would it be? Let's just follow, if we followed the coronary band. Let's see, how far? Well, at least there. At least there. Do you see how that would pull all that up? how that would pull that heel back, the whole foot. And then of course the cartilage up here, that's gonna push all that cartilage up. See, like that. I mean, look at the size of that heel buttress. That's pretty, pretty good size, wouldn't it? See, so the heel buttress is supposed to be growing down from here like that, because the whole hoof claw grows like this, you know, down like this, right? So what happens as, as this is being pulled down, then all that, that wall that was supposed to be growing, you know, over here like this, is now being pushed this way. And what happens is, eventually, this gets like closed up and then you have no heel buttress really at all. Because it, it's just like grass. When it gets compressed or covered up, it quits growing. Everything on this foot, if it gets uh, compressed or like uh, dead, some dead on top of it, what's under it quits growing. Let's see. Um, clear. Oh. Okay. Um, this just goes to show you how, how much of the foot is solid. This whole area is not solid. Um, these heels here, not solid. Okay, this coffin bone ends about here. About here. Um, just again, how the, the foot is supposed to fit in the capsule, but of course, this is a deformed foot. This is a distorted capsule, but you, who would think, right? Looks like it has heels, right? Um, but this was a good foot, but as I kept trimming the heels out, what's it do? It just starts moving forward and pulling this into it like that. So a horse can look like he has heels, like this horse did. 
Um, but every time I went out there, I would cut the heels down to there. See? Well, here's what happens. Just a minute. Okay, so here's the periopal flap right there. So every time I come, I do that. Okay, well now this does not want to be down there. So then it, it'll still stretch back up some, you know. Um, and then, uh, in fact, you could come out a week later, you're going to have another periopal flap due to this. And you, you would think the heel had grown. So you take off even more heel and more heel and more heel. And the whole time, you know, it's hard to explain how this capsule gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And pulling this whole foot underneath here. Because as the frog is trimmed out and stripped out, it can pull the whole back of this foot into where the frog should have been. Because the frog is a separate entity that's supposed to support the back of this foot. See, a frog stay would be up in this foot like that. You know, a frog would be like this in this foot. And, and it keeps this whole thing from being pulled down under. See, that's what the frog does. Um, so you're, you're trimming the frog out of the foot. As you're doing all this, the frog is getting less and less and less and less. It has to for this foot to be able to be pulled down. Although another thing I've seen happen is um, a lot of the frog can stay there, but then the foot will be pulled over it and the frog will be rolled up under the back of the foot right here. So, you know, how painful is this? And it's happening slow and gradual. So the horse is adapting to it slowly, but it will cause consistent discomfort and pain. Oh, goodness. Anyway, you see up between there is where the frog stake goes. Now you can tell, well, I don't know, that might have been a pretty good foot. I don't know. I don't know. Look at the, the heel buttress there. I don't know what was, that wasn't a dissection of mine, so I don't know. This one also is not mine. Um, it's got pretty, fairly good definition here, but I think there was still something wrong with it right here. Just the way the cartilage looks so stiff like that, how the, uh, uh, the heel buttress corium is so short there. Here's a plaster cast I made of a dissection that I did. And then I, I, I was messing with clay and I put a clay sole on it. But here's our ideal foot right here. See, nice straight coronary band, cartilage, nice and relaxed and supported up like that. Um, uniform sole thickness here, but you know, uh, again, this is the capsule and the foot are two separate entities. Even though the capsule grows from the foot and is attached to it, it comes off in one piece. Now here you see where the, all the bulb and everything has been pulled down and under the foot. See how it's bent the foot here. Look at the buttress. That's not where the buttress should go, right there. Horse can't really grow any sole. Uh, a lot of times, and there's going to be a dish in the wall here. Just a thing I did, you know, uh, a while back. Which hoof do you think is the healthy hoof? A lot of us would look at that one, said that one, but it's actually this one. See? That other shape goes onto that foot. Look at the difference. See this right here? That's this area that's up here. That's been pulled clear down to the ground here. You can see how it's bent the heels. Okay. 
Again, here's another one. All the bulbs pulled down to the ground. Horse forced to walk on his bulbs. And of course, this is that wild foot. Um, it had a huge heel buttress right here. There was no distortion in this foot at all. Um, that horse would have been walking on his bulbs, I think, yeah. Yeah, heels trimmed out of this horse, everything pulled down under forward. This just is not right in here. So, you know, I just take and mess around and try and fit feet to, to different parts. Here we go. This foot's been totally trimmed out, had, had the bulbs pulled down under the foot. Okay, I did some, let's see, what did that wind up being? That was just a 20 degree, but they try and get a 30 degree hairline. And that was, something like that. See, inner foot is a whole foot. It's not just parts in there. So I just collect pictures of inner feet as much as possible. Now see how the cartilage has been pulled down. See how the buttress is aimed forward like that. Well, when it, you know, everything's got to move. When something moves out of place, everything else has to move somewhere. Here, this is what I was doing. I was taking that ideal foot and the foot that I did and trying to figure out if, if they would interchange. And actually, they do. See, and, and that's when I started getting the idea, well, all horses have the same feet. Look, we can just mix and match feet and capsules. Just trying to figure out the dimensions of feet. Here, again, this is where the coffin bone ends, right in here. And so, you know, heels can be contracted or, or they can be spread apart as well. They can also be, uh, one bulb can be high, one bulb can be low, one bulb can be way forward. So you can move the back of that foot all over the place. Okay, this shows you where the coffin bone ends. But the sole corium extends. That shows you where the sole corium is. Um, and just where the bone, the coffin bone ends right here. So the whole back of this foot can be manipulated and moved. And when this frog is removed, it can really be pushed around. Now, I didn't know it at the time. Look at that collateral group. Not supposed to be like that. Because you were talking about, okay, when, when um, the foot is pulled down like that, what happens to bar? The bar is bent up. You see how the bar bent, is bent up into the foot? That's not supposed to be like that. That is not the shape of the bottom of the foot under here. It's very gradual and very smooth. So this would have been pushing up into the bottom of his foot. This would have been forced up into the bottom of his foot. This would have been pulling the whole foot down and under and bending it in like that. So while that's being forced down, this is being forced up into the bottom of the foot. So this is what's happening to these horses. See, and it's so, uh, it's really kind of diabolical, you know, uh, that, that what is being taught as the truth is the exact thing that does this and creates this situation in these horses. Uh, slow, 
constant torture. Sometimes when I think of this horse, even though I didn't kill him, you know, I think of what I was doing to his feet. It just makes me cry. It, Lynn. Yeah. So do you have photos of the actual, just like the digital cushion? Yeah, I'll show you some. Yeah, just, I'd always try to, ex trying to find a way to explain the consistency of the digital to people. And if I just say, oh, it's made of fatty tissue, they go, well, that doesn't yeah. make any sense. And then yeah. I try to explain it's a shock um, absorber. And then okay um well you will start seeing some here pretty soon like right there you can see it right there now this cartilage is about oh my goodness it's just a it's very thin you know inside of it it's it's shaped like this but inside of it it's digital cushion Yeah, I want to see if I can get to some pictures. Okay, well, so the digital cushion is all in here. And uh, I've taken it out here. See, it follows the shape of the frog and on both sides of the foot there. And it's attached to the inside of the lateral cartilage. Let's see if I can find some good pictures of it here. So, I just seen a good picture of it a bit ago, wherever it was I was. Okay, I think we're back to where we were. Yeah, okay. Um, so you can kind of see it there, but not really. So let me go back. Just gonna... All right, so you get the idea anyway that the horse has a whole foot. And then inside that foot is the digital cushion. But we want to look at, um, I'm trying to think of where I was previously. Um, just a second here. Okay. Let's see, Dave. Let me get the. Uh, I'm trying to think of where I was because I had a really good picture of a digital cushion. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. I mean, I have a lot of pictures of digital cushions, but I, oh, well, here I've got a ton of dissection pictures here. Just a minute. Let's see if I can find this, maybe this one. And I was going to show this one picture where we were at before. If I saw it, you have to take the hide off of the wing to be able to actually see the digital cushion between the bolts. Um, Mm -hmm. 
Darn it, I should have stopped right then. I should have stopped right then. Um, well, let me let me show you this, okay? Just a sec. Um, okay. Um, let's see here. Make this bigger now. What I wanted to show you, if you if you remove this hide here, you're gonna see, well, right here, you're, there is cartilage, thin cartilage that keeps the shape, just like your cartilage. I mean, that's primarily what this kind of cartilage does, keeps the shape kind of of the foot, but inside of it here is all digital cushion. All in here, up in here, and over into here, that's all digital cushion, all of that, and right in here, from here to here. If we were to cut the foot in half, this is what it looks like right here. Um, okay, if we were to cut the foot in half, this right here is the digital cushion. Um, now, in this foot here, you can't really see it because the bone is still there, but it's shaped just like this here. Now this pink part here, that, that is just representing what the frog does. And then here's the frog skull, right here. The frog grows from the frog core in between the bulbs here. Let's go back here a second. Okay, you see right there, the bulbs, skin. Okay, the frog stay grows between here. Now, when the heels are trimmed out, it pulls all this down. And instead of having this space between the bulbs, it pulls it all down and compresses them and makes it like almost one solid unit across here with no frog stay and no frog support at all. Pulling all this down to the ground and that's what the horse is walking on. Um, so let's go back here. Okay, so this area right here is frog corium. And this is very thin layer of frog corium right here. Just skin, skin thick. So then right on the other side of it, right in here, all going across the foot and into the bulb is the digital cushion. So the digital cushion is all here, plus under here, under the navicular bone, and it cushions the deep digital flexor tendon and the navicular bone in here. And it has to be, has to be supported in this specific location by the frog that grows from it. And so you have, you want to have like say three fourths to an inch thick of frog here, but this now goes up between those bulbs, see? And so that's your frog stay. Now what's interesting is, now we're looking at half the foot, right? The other half the foot's connected to it. And so let's go back again. Okay, so this is frog that grows all up in here and you want another inch of frog down here below the bulbs. This is the bulb. This frog, here, I'm going to annotate just a second here. Um, okay, so frog grows here, over to here. Not a very good color, you can't hardly see it. This is frog, right there. Now, these heels work independently, okay? That's so that a horse can stand on ground that is not even, see? So those heels go up and down and those bulbs go up and down. Now the foot, the foot is all of this, okay? That's, that's all foot. The foot doesn't stop here at the hairline. 
Okay, but the frog is part of the capsule. It is not part of the foot, but it supports the foot and it grows from the foot. And it supports the digital cushion so that the digital cushion stays supported up under here. And so, you know, I want you to think of this. Let's say you can put your hands on those bones and you, you can move them independently. Uh, uh, okay, and right in here that connects them is a flexible frog that connects them. And so, so each can move independently within a certain perimeter and yet that frog, which is very strong, growing from both sides and up here, holds them together and supports the digital cushion. And it gives the horse traction. It gives the horse his suspension so that he's not hitting hard and bottoming out. You know, um, it's like the shock absorber of the foot. Um, and the support. So, you know, much better to have a frog stay. It's two inches, about two inches from here to here. And then you have about an inch of frog from here to here. And so, you know, just imagine that's why you have to keep your frog growing. You have to keep it flexible. Um, the perfect ideal foot has a frog that continually grows and exfoliates. And they can't do that for themselves unless they're in specific country, the specific moisture content, et cetera. Um, we can do better than nature because we can take uh, these feet and we can, uh, because of our intellect, we can understand them and we can take care of them properly. Now we can't do, the one thing we can't do unless we ride them a lot is also forge the foot. Because after the horse gets the foot or has the foot, then he needs to forge the foot, which is done by, by exercise and movement. But you can't uh, do that to a horse that, that hasn't got much of a foot. It's by forging the foot, I mean the horse already has what he needs. Okay? Uh, I don't mean it like uh, some people mean it to mean, well, you force frog contact because it makes the frog grow. No, it doesn't. Uh, you know, if let's say something's happened and, and I got, I only got that much frog. See, I should have a heel at least like that. Okay, so I, I want sole under here, right? I want sole under my foot. So let's say something happens to my frog. If I take, keep taking my heels down uh, to what my frog are, see, you don't let a frog determine your heel height. You let the heel height grow correctly so that it can support the frog corium up off the ground to allow that frog to grow nice and good and thick and strong. Let me undo this. Okay, so again, this is just like whale blubber and it's full of oil so it is fat it is absolute fat now i do not think that it is fibro fatty cartilage see something really interesting happened okay i was watching a video by dr boker and he's he was showing these uh fibers that were going through uh the digital cushion and he was saying that these formed from stress. And I started thinking they're not supposed to be there like that. That what he was looking at were feet that had been abused and that that fiber was a response to injury. And he interpreted that as that was something that was absolutely supposed to be there. And, uh, you you lower the heels and you force the horse to walk, you know, on that frog and it makes it do that. Well, yeah, it does make it do it, but it's not what you want. Um, you want a really healthy, fatty digital cushion for so it's soft. It's soft, but it's firm. 
because when you have this frog supporting it, see, heavy duty hard frog, this pastor here descends down onto this digital cushion. It's pushing down, okay, the whole time it's pushing down, this frog and the digital cushion are pushing up. See there, you can see the frog, how the frog keeps the digital cushion under uh, compression there so that that there's that cushioning for the foot and it's not just a cushioning it's a constant that fat i'm going to tell you what that fat okay i don't it, it, it this is the kind of fat it is like have you ever got a piece of fat on a roast that you could not chew up no matter what you did you could chew it up it's like it's like fat and it's kind of like gristle but not really it's just a weird kind of fatty type stuff. That's what this is. Okay? It's like it's like a cushion, but it's a spring at the same time. So the whole time the, the horse is stepping and pushing down, it's pushing back. See? But when you trim, when you take the frog away, there's no support for it. And this is what happens here. See, look, no frog. See there? So this is this is what they teach is healthy. See, I found this picture on the net, and it says, dissection of an excellent hoof. Note the hairline. You know what the hairline on this horse was? Just a minute here. It's like this. So what happened? When you trim the heels out and this frog here gets smaller and smaller and the heels get smaller and smaller, it takes this digital cushion and it starts pulling and tearing and pulling it down to here. See? And then you wind up with that much frog and a digital cushion that looks like that. You see it? You see the difference? Yep. See how it deceives people? You know, mm -hmm. um, see, so look at the frog here. This is a perfect idea, wild hoof here. Okay, now the digital cushion is up here. Now this one has a bone in it, you know, so. Digital cushion is up there. Here's the frog that's supposed to support that digital cushion up between the bulbs right here. So when you over trim the heels, it starts trimming the frog out and this all gets pulled down to where then, here, look at the frog here. See it? Are you kind of starting to understand? Let's see here. Um, okay. Let's see what else we got here. Okay. Um, now we'll go look at some digital cushions. Now, again, this is anatomically correct. Pretty close to being anatomically correct. Shape of a digital cushion. Cut in half. It is the shape that I showed you earlier of that that frog. Because um, under, see it goes clear to the end of your frog right here. So, um, let's see there. Well, let me stop this for a second.
Okay. Well, I don't have too many here. Oh, oh, I found one that I wanted to show you. Okay. Just a second here. Got it. Find. All right. Let's look at these. Okay, so this on this foot, the hide has been taken off. Okay, so what you see is fat. It's a digital cushion all in here, including what I showed you the side view. Can you click on it so we can see it? It's real small. Can you see it now? No. Well, I wonder why not. Just not. Um, can you see that? Yep. Okay. Okay. So all through here is digital cushion. And uh, this is cartilage. So it's thin. So it, you know, it goes over into here. Now the frog supports it up here. But this is all digital cushion and it is literally fat. Um, and like if you soak it for a long time, if you soak these feet in water, literally golden oil comes out of them and one time i baked one <laughs> i just wanted to see if i could like i don't know cure it or something i don't know so i thought well okay i'm gonna slow bake a foot yeah my husband really appreciates that but anyway when i when i got it out of the oven the pan was full of oil see so it is fat literally it is fat that's what keeps their feet from freezing. It's like whale fat, like whale blubber, adipose tissue. Um, let's see what else I got here. Okay, hey, there it is. You can see it. Okay, right there. See how it goes? Um, well, anyway, that's the shape of it. Okay, here's two different ones. Neither one of them is correct. Okay, see how the bulb's been pulled down? There's no frog stay supporting the digital cushion. Look at the deformation of the digital cushion right there. And that one too. See, frog's, frog's supposed to be, this part of the frog is supposed to be squirting that clear up here. Okay, this shows you how the cartilages are over here. And that's probably a very damaged one. I'm just trying to figure out some of these pictures. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Um, so anyway, I've already been through that. Um, I know I got more. So let me stop here and close this one out and okay Okay, this one here. I got some more. Oh, this is this is the picture I was looking for. Okay, this one. Okay. See that one? Hello? Hello? Anybody hear yes. me? Okay. We can, we can see it, yeah. Okay, okay. You see, see how it's fat? When you push on it, okay, uh, it, it, it doesn't, I mean, you push it in, but it's pushing back. It's, it's really a heavy duty fat. See, and it fills up this whole area here. 
So, you know, that'd be a good thing. Go palpate the back of your horse's foot. You know what I mean? To feel it right in here. And then, of course, it's under the frog, the whole frog. Underneath there is digital cushion. Okay, so here you see digital cushion. Now, again, uh, some of the frog is trimmed out of this, but, you know, it's still got some because this frog should go more up like that. So some of that is trimmed out, but not too bad. It's got a pretty good frog there, pretty good thickness, see? But some of the heel is trimmed out of this horse. Okay, there you see it. It's fat. That one ain't right. This one is deformed and pulled down. See it? That's not supposed to be shaped like that at all. Um, something's still going on with this one, but, you know, not as bad as some of them. You're going to see some really bad ones. See, you can't even tell about what that one is by this time. Look at this one. They look where the frog is down here. How the frog is pulled down like this and it's pulled the digital cushion into that. And then it's it's come down under and it's folded part of the frog up into its foot like that. Right? And obviously this was uh, uh, laminitis. Now, again, this all got pushed up under here, right? So it created leverages that led to what went on to this horse's wall here. Look at that one. See, and, and they just think, oh, that's a good digital cushion. Look how wide it is. But that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to have frog up between the bulbs here. See, all these are what you call sagittal uh, sections. They've been sliced right down the middle in between the bulbs. Here we go. This is the famous wild horse that all barefoot trims are modeled after. Again, this horse wore his heels out. Whether you wear them out or you rasp them out, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to deform the foot. There's that one again that I think is a perfect foot. Now this ain't too bad. Look at the thickness of sole on that horse. Look at the white line. This horse had really a, an excellent foot. You know, look at the thickness of the frog and the health, the health of the frog. See, this frog stay supported this pretty good in here. Okay, look at the frog again here. You know, see, that's not what went on here. It, not good. Not good. Hairline clear down here. Again, look at the frog. That's not how a frog is supposed to be. You're supposed to have that frog up between these bulbs here. See, this has all been stretched down and distorted and deformed. Again, I'm not real impressed with what I'm seeing here. Look at this one. Okay, now can you see the fat? See how fat it is? Notice that a lot of these got this issue right here. That's why I say you're dealing with the whole foot. When we look at this, we tend to forget this is a whole foot. This is not just a capsule with parts in it. The capsule in and of itself is a separate entity, okay? This is the whole foot. So the foot is being deformed. 
And this isn't supposed to be here like this. This has been pushed up this way and pushed into the bottom of the cotton bone here, pushing all this up and forcing this toe back. Okay, we know that's not supposed to be like that. They, this area between the bulbs is not supposed to be pulled down like that. See, uh, you find way more deformed and distorted. Now, look at how it was pulled under and then this piece of the frog was pushed up into the foot like that. See, this is all distortion and, and deformation. See, this is the frog stay. It grows between the bulb. When the heels are trimmed out, this piece right here is stretched down and it's almost as if there's not even any space between the bulbs at all. It's almost like they're just one unit. Um, I can show you my horse's feet, just a second. I'll show you an example on my horse. Um, just a second here, I'm gonna find it. Okay, he just finally got an uphill. Uh, these these are these pictures are six months apart. And I showed you without the hide on it and everything like that how there is a space between the bulbs yeah, out here, right? I am. I hear okay, so this here, it, he almost doesn't have that. All this was pulled down to the ground. Okay, uh, this just happened recently to where he really did get a true space and a lift between his bulbs and now he's growing a real frog stay between the bulbs. See it? Didn't have it there. They were pulled down, but finally they got enough elevation. This little area here got pulled back up here to where it could start to grow this. And where's the digital cushion? All in here. See, and it needs to be supported up. This needs to be pushed up and supported up by uh, not just this, but then once we get more heel, okay, at least another inch of frog under here. And this will push all of this digital cushion up and support it. See, this is this has this digital cushion here has no support up where it's supposed to be. And so this is one of the things we're doing is you have to get these heels in and back so that it starts pushing that inner foot back up where it's supposed to be to give you this space between the bulbs like that where your frog can grow to push up and support this digital cushion here. See, I didn't really realize. I would look at that and think, oh, that's the frog stay, right? Starting, it wasn't. This is the frog stay. Okay, this is totally different what I got going here than what went here. This, this area right here is right here. And it finally just grew enough to where it pushed up and separated and parted and, and uh, started growing this frog. Here. Can you hear anything? Do 
Okay, this side. Okay, just a second. Okay, can you see that? What about there? Hello? Yes, it's there. Okay. Okay, so here we have, these were two wild feet that, that were good wild feet. The hairline was high, like that. This is the bad wild foot with no frog that has uh, pulled the digital cushion out of place. Um, this is a frog supporting the digital cushion where it's supposed to be. Um, I had been able to restore my mare's feet to give her a pretty good space up here and a good frog stay. Um, okay, this shows you, here shows you some more digital cushion. Again, it's fat. They can call it fibro fatty, whatever they think, I don't care. It's fat. It is primarily fat. It is adipose tissue. Um, just a minute. And that's why a horse's feet don't freeze because that adipose tissue um, doesn't freeze. It's whale blubber. It's like whale blubber. Let's see. I'm going to look it up. Adipose tissue or fat. <laughs> okay. Just a minute. Stop share. <laughs> Now that I gotta, I gotta change it constantly. Stupid thing, stupid people. Really. Okay, so here you got, see, adipose tissue or fat is an anatomical term for loose connective tissue composed of adipocytes. <laughs> its main role is to store energy in the form of fat, although it also cushions and insulates the body. Now do you see how great that digital cushion is? I mean, when you think about th just this definition, you know, it insulates those feet. You ever wonder why horses' feet don't freeze? Because of the adipose digital cushion fat that's in there. Um, there isn't a lot of, uh, what we, I don't know how you say it, like flesh or meat on a foot. See, that's just pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. Look how it's yellow. Yeah, that's why I say when you soak them, the fat dissolves and will float to the top of the water in big yellow uh, dots. So adipose tissue, you know, see, this is the thing. When you're studying this stuff, you want to go read stuff like this. Um, it would be interesting to read this whole thing. But I think it's interesting where it says its main role is to store energy in the form of lipids although it also cushions and insulates the body. Huh, that's interesting. It says, far from being hormonally inert, adipose tissue has in recent years been recognized as a major endocrine organ. What the, what is that? See, I don't know what this, a chemical, okay, get this. The endocrine system is a chemical messenger system comprising feedback loops of the hormones released by internal glands of an organism, whatever, into the circulatory system, regulating distant organs. Now that's weird. That's interesting because look at all the stuff that's going on with these horses, uh, all these uh, metabolic issues because of their feet. 
and look at what we're seeing about these digital cushions, all the deformed digital cushions, right? Um, hmm. That, this would be an interesting study. See? Huh. Let's go back here. Um, let's see. Says there are two types of adipose tissue. Um, white, which stores energy, and brown, uh, which generates body heat. Um, the formation of adipose tissue appears to be controlled in part by the adipose gene. Adipose tissue, more specifically brown adipose tissue, was first identified by the Swiss naturalist Conrad Gesser. Huh. Well, anyway, I'm going to come back and I'm going to read this article. See, the more, the more you think of things to read um, that will relate to the foot, the more your understanding will have. Okay, so let's uh, stop share. Um, okay. Here again, see the difference. They mark difference. Where's the frog? Where's the frog? What do you think is stronger? Do you think this digital cushion is stronger than that frog? See, but they don't even know what they're looking at. Okay, so there's my mare's deformed foot. Should have had cartilages going way out here, but everything was pushed forward. But regardless, Okay, this is the shape of her digital cushion. Um, and she grew a pretty good frog stay. Now I know there are better ones, you know. So, anyway, this, this horse is here on problems. Um, Let's see if I can find some more on the digital cushion. You know, some of those uh, videos I have where I talk about the frog stay, okay, the digital cushion, when the, when the pastor descends, it hits the digital cushion, which is definitely a cushion, okay? Now you know why they call it a cushion, right? Because it's adipose tissue. It's fat. And uh, so it hits the digital cushion, which then hits the frog stay, which then all presses down together. And you don't want your frog just totally hitting the ground. You want it to have a little bit of uh, leeway so that when everything presses down, it has some give to it. And the whole time, it's pushing back up. It's helping that leg push back up, that pastor push back up. Okay, um, get on. Let's see. Well, hold on here, gotta have a drink of water. Let's see. I know I got more pictures. Um, but I, I put them at something else. I got to remember what I put them at. Because when I was studying that and figuring it out, digital cushion might have been. Well, we can look at these. Um, these plastis, plastinators. Okay, um, let's see. What the heck? Let's just go for copyright infringement today. <laughs> this is what, this is a, a, the FU doctrine. Fair use. See, I wasn't saying nothing bad. 
Okay, it's called the FU Doctrine, Fair Use Copyright. Okay, so, Am I you know, seeing pictures? what? Are y'all all seeing pictures? Um, not yet, right? I'll get them here in a second. Uh, hold on, I gotta find you. I get a lot. Oh, just a minute. Who are you talking to? Neil needs your help. He's in the bathroom. Oh. I don't okay. know what's going on. Okay. Just a minute. Um, hold on. I'll be back. I have a little bit of an emergency. Hold on. No worries. I don't know what's going on. What's wrong? What? Thank you. 
Okay, I'm back. Anybody there? We're here. Okay, well, well, okay, so here's the emergency. Uh, my husband was taking a shower and all the shower doors decided they wanted to fall apart. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he was standing there holding shower doors up, trying not to let them fall on him. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. You know, my friend had a door back. problem yesterday. <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay, so um, I was going somewhere. I can remember where. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll go to the frog story. Or, oh well, we were we we're gonna do uh, uh, the the fair use um, copyright for you know for critique and for this and for whatever. So. We're we're using this under fair use. It's not for commercial prop, pr purposes. Um, let's see. Okay, where is it? Oh, Stranger. Okay. There we go. Okay. So these are plastic. You know what that plastinization stuff is? This guy, Dr. C. V. Horst. He does all kinds of stuff. He does these slices of these feet like this. Okay, so there's your digital cushion again. Again, this is the area between the bulbs, and I think the heels were probably trimmed out of this foot. Um, that just don't look right. See, that would have been where the frog stay should have been, and the bulbs should have been wider apart right here. They should be wider apart. Look at that one. Yeah, you know, and you, you start seeing a real correlation between uh, the deformation of this a lot of times and these bad laminite of cases. See, just not right. See all different shapes? They're not supposed to be all different shapes. So you can see sick, weak, lucky frog. See, that frog is supposed to grow a certain way and supposed to support this digital cushion in a specific way. Because fat, fat really doesn't keep, uh, it, it's, it doesn't keep its shape. And so what the frog does is it holds that thing right there. Well, that's a bad one. Look at that, look at, look at, if all this is pushing this way, what's it doing? It's pushing that coffin bone that way. Look at how it's worn uh, the toe off. Okay, here again, you push this in. If the foot is supposed to, you know, be set, in, of course, right there at the center, center, uh, we're looking at a sagittal section, so it's gonna be a little bit that way anyway, but you see how, you push this up, push the coffin bone that way, and, and the toe down that way. So we haven't seen a good one yet. That looks like an elephant. See, look at that. That's well, that's not right.
Mm. That one's interesting. Uh, not that bad a shape on that one. Um, and this is where I thought it looked like a foot. And so the way I wanted to uh, kind of show like the way the frog supports the digital cushion and keeps it in shape is kind of like, you know, kind of like a, that shoe, that cork sole there would be to your foot. Again, that's frog corium right there. This is on the external part of the foot. This is on the internal part of the foot. Okay. Um, let's see here. We're going to look at frogs still because see, you, you got to have one with the other. The frog and the frog stay along with the digital cushion. Um, the frog is what supports uh, the digital cushion so that it can do its job. Without the support of a full frog stay and a good frog, the digital cushion cannot do its job. Um, let's see here. Well, I'll go up here to F. Let's see what I got. Just a minute and I'll have a, okay. Um, well, I did this whole thing of drawings on those digital cushions. And now I'm not sure what they look what I had them under. But we'll go ahead and look at frog anatomy because that's the other side of the digital cushion. Um, same shape underneath anyway. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, oh, I bet this ain't going to work. Just a second here. Um, probably can't see that. So let me redo this. So I'm just going to look at everything I got under this one part of frog anatomy here. Um, of course, this is the same foot. Uh, now you've got to remember that under here, under the frog is the frog corium, and under that is the digital cushion. Now you can tell by looking at the bottom of this foot that he has no frog stay. Look at where the hairline is, clear down at the ground. It's supposed to be the up about uh, an inch or more. But I believe this is what uh, somebody was showing me how they cleaned up their foot pretty good. They did a pretty good job. So I'm just looking at frogs here right now. Um, again, what's underneath there? The digital cushion. This frog supports the digital cushion and your frog ultimately, eventually, um, should look rather defined. Something that I've started doing that I never did before is I have started uh, going ahead and trimming out in here to form a central sulcus. Okay, so let's see. So here's your frog stay, and up above that, up in there, it's supporting the digital cushion. Now look at the frog on that guy. See? 
And he's got an inch of sole, an inch of frog, and then two inches of frog stay. Well, inch up here, this would be between the bulbs and down to here, almost two inches of frog. See, that frog is meant to support that digital cushion that's up in that foot. Well, Linda, by, yeah. could you kind of give me some landmarks on that picture? Those pictures always throw me. Okay. <clears throat> Um, let's see. Let me, let me. Are we looking at it sideways or from behind? Okay. From this one here for just a minute. Let me get it bigger here. Um, imitate. Okay. This one here, you're looking at it kind of from beneath and behind at the same time. Okay. So, uh, uh, this would be the top of the frog stay right here, up between the bulbs, right here. See, and right here. But is, not at the coronary band, right? The coronary band is over by your green. Coronary band's right here. Oh, okay. Huh. Really? Yeah, the coronary band's yes. right there. Okay. Okay. Um, this is uh, okay. This is the frog. This is the frog corium right there half of it you know he's still got half a capsule here this is the bottom of the collateral groove right here okay. sure did that <laughs> <laughs> this is the back of the heel right there this would be the back of the heel this is the heel buttress right here. This is the lamina. And this is the sole. Oh, okay. Right there. Um, and so he's got half of the hoof capsule removed. And then this is the coronary band right up here. This is periopal skin, right? Maybe right about to here. See there, right here. Okay, this is frog skin right here, attached to the heel. And this is the frog stay, starts clear up here between the bulbs and it goes clear down to here, almost two inches. Okay, I'm getting the picture okay. now. Now here's the central sulcus right here, but it's full. See it right there? It's got frog in it. But this is, see, but that's dead frog. Okay, you can see live frog here. See it? See that good live frog? But the central sulcus is not cleaned out so that there's an actual sulcus there. See, that would be right there. See how you can see that, that live frog on that horse? But he's just got a little bit of excess that hasn't worn out that's right there in his central sulcus. Okay, and then again, here's the uh, coronary band, periopal skin. Here's frog skin attached to the heel, right here. Here's the top of the frog stay, right here. This is the back of the frog stay, okay, and it goes all the way down to there, about two inches. Here's the internal uh, center, okay, you can see this all frog here. And so, uh, anyway, this is, uh, here's the frog corium, here's collateral groove, here's sole corium over here. Um, and then over here, what you got is, uh, you got the frog right here. Now you see that kind of cream colored, uh, that's the frog. Okay, you see that kind of cream color there? stuff. That's the frog corium that grows the frog. Right under that is the digital cushion. Now you can't see it because this is a coffin bone. Um, this is a coffin bone right here. It's a coffin bone. You can't see the digital cushion very good, but it's right here. 
something like that. Okay. Now, where's the coffin bone again? Sorry. It's outlined here in the yellow. It, he didn't see, he didn't take, he didn't cut this foot in half fully. The coffin bone is still fully there. When they do a sagittal section, they cut the, that part of the coffin bone off, and then you can see, you can see the digital cushion right under here. But you see this frog? This is part of the capsule. When you take the capsule off, the frog comes with it in one piece. You can see it right here. How it's attached to the capsule, right? You can take this all off in one piece. The digital cushion is separate. It's part of the foot. It's not part of the capsule. But it, but the frog coin that covers it grows the frog that supports and keeps the digital cushion in place in the foot. You know. So you really got to see these as two entities joined together. Uh, and that one can be removed just like your shoe. Just like you would have an arch support, right? You know, I have bad feet, so I had to have uh, orthotics made. It cost me $300. They took a cast of my foot, and then it's shaped just like the bottom of my foot. Well, this is the same with the frog. It's like the, the orthotic for the digital cushion. And it supports and keeps the digital cushion in place. Without it, the digital cushion is worthless. See, it's much stronger, much hardier, much firmer than the fat that the digital cushion is made out of. So they work in unison. And uh, uh, you can't uh, build up the digital cushion by lowering heels and forcing it to be pummeled. Uh, when is fat ever made into muscle? Anybody know? Does fat ever turn into muscle? No, it doesn't. You know, uh, so you can't build it up in that sense. What you can do is you can grow really good heels and have a super healthy frog that, that just really supports it, you know, um, that's what you want. Let's see. Okay. Um, okay, so, you know, there's your frog quorum and your digital cushion is under there. Out here, just that. Well, this is a uh, um, this horse had one heck of a good frog right here. Okay, um, this when I was trying to trying to see how close my foot was to that foot. Okay, okay. So here's all the parts. So here's where your coronary band goes. And then here's uh, between your bulbs and where your frog stay grows to support the digital cushion that's all up in here. This is all digital cushion all up in here and under the foot. You know, so we can, we've seen two different views of it when the foot is sliced from the top and you see the width of it this way. And then when the foot is sliced down the middle, and you see the shape in the middle. Okay, now this is the foot uh, that I was trimming the heels out of. Um, now, I think this is the same foot, but you notice how uh, after a while, the back of it started to come up. Okay, but look how deformed the frog was. The frog is not supposed to be like that. But this horse had a wonderful, I remember that frog. I had it in a jar here in vinegar for quite a while. I wish I would have saved it. Um, it was a humongous frog with a humongous frog stay, but I didn't know any of that then. And so I had taken that whole thing apart and I just took that frog and I set it under this foot right here. 
Well, the frog uh, was deformed. You see that? Now look, as I was trimming the heels out here, this frog was attached to here, right? Look at how it deformed the frog and was pushing it up into the back of the coffin bowl. You see how horses get laminitis? You see how some, I'm not saying all, uh, coffin bowl rotation happens this way, but it's a big, big part of it. So, you know, trimming the heels out of that horse, pulling all this down, he had this big healthy frog, it didn't want to go nowhere. And so what's it doing? It's bending up into the foot like that. That is interesting. Yeah. Okay, could you go back to that picture that you just left? Okay, where are your lateral cartilages? Can you right kind of point them? There. Okay. Do you think it can get to the point to where those are kind of running under too? Oh, th absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Because all this is connected together, see? All this is connected together. So when you're trimming the heels out and it's pulling it down like this, yeah. Okay, um, then now, now again, this is pretty fresh after I took the hoof capsule off. This yeah. was later, and oh, the boy. foot actually started going back to where it wanted to be. Oh. So, um, see, look at look at the difference in this area right here, the coronary band, and this is the uh, heel buttress corium right here. See it right here. Yeah. See the definition of the heel. Look at it here, though. Oh. Huh. See the difference. Yeah. Okay. Now, One of those, uh, yeah, that explains something. Okay, now the frog was connected to this. And so the frog, see, it happens slow and you're gradually trimming it out. So the frogs get deformed because as the foot is getting deformed, then the frog is going, going from the deformed position, but it still has the frog on it that was when it was the other way a lot of times, you see? So as you're pulling this down, it's supposed to be up here. Frog's attached to it. As it's pulling it down like this, look what's happening right here. See how it's pushing up? Right there. Not supposed to do that. See, if it was flying from this foot, it would be, um, it would be flat like this. This piece here is deformed. And so this whole frog, which is very, it was very firm, very hard frog, was being pulled down like this, shoved forward, and it was bending and pushing up into the bottom of the foot. Again, see, you could take this and, and hit it right there. See, now this is something, I, I haven't looked at these pictures for a long time since I've learned some of this stuff. And now I'm seeing how this foot started going back to where it wanted to be. Why is that? Because this is cartilage. Cartilage wants to maintain its shape, right? Yeah. You know? So, uh, yeah, this is the same foot. I just So I just, you don't have pictures from the back of that foot, do you? Um, from behind? I might like with the frog I might, now. I might somewhere, you know. Um, okay. I'd have to find them. See what's going on here. Okay, so anyway, there you go. Now you see why it would be so wrong to just cut heels according to frog height. You got a you got a foot here that's got full frog. And I mean you got two inches from here to here. You've got a good inch of frog right here. These heels are way long. This this horse was needing a trim, you see. But look at here. Here's um kind of a similar foot in a way, but with no frog. So what? You're gonna take the heels down to here. See, and then what's the what's the horse gonna be on? going to be on frog corium.
Um, now here's a picture of a back, the back of a foot. Okay, what's wrong with this picture right here? The, look, the heels are trimmed out, the skin is pulled down, there's no frog stay between the bulb. Looks sore to me. Okay, so here's the back of your foot. And you can see what's going on with the back of this foot. It doesn't have correct heels or correct capsule. The, that frog stay has to be solid not a big split up the back of the foot. You know, you want good solid frog growing in there. Uh, this is Bethany Penley's horse that had the canker. And it was caused, see, she showed me her trimmer and I watched some of his videos and it was horrifying. It was absolutely horrifying uh, what was going on. Uh, why this, uh, I'm thankful it never happened to me. You know, uh, he was trimming the, what they're doing now is worse than, than, than everything I did because they have just advanced in teaching this. You know, different men came along and, you know, uh, tweaked it to try and, and, and get that Jamie Jackson foot. And so now what they're doing is even worse, okay? So, so what happens is the horse has nothing to, no frog to protect their foot at all. And so they get what's called canker. But this is not canker. This is a wound. This is where the horse did not have any frog, any heel height or any frog to protect that sensitive frog coil. And it just wore away and it became a wound. And then you get what's called granulated tissue. You know what proud flesh is, granulated tissue? Does everybody know what that is? Yep. See, look at this guy, he had no frog stay, no heels. Hairline cleared down at the ground. See, see why you have to have that thick frog? Yeah, look at that. That's terrible. Now this wasn't too bad, I guess. Hmm. Okay, so I got the wild foot. Now this is ideal right here, up between the bulbs. Remember, this is up between the bulbs, okay? One side hooks to one inside of the bulb and the other side hooks the other bulb on the other side. And it grows from between them, okay? Now look at, look at neither one of these are quite right. You know, how important is the back of the foot? You know, here I'm, I'm taking pictures of my little frog stays that were starting there, peeking out at me. Okay, so here what I've tried to simulate what happens. So here you have um, a foot and you see the space between the bulbs where the frog stay grows. Now, um, here is what you're seeing here on this, you would see this cut down right the middle. And this is what you would see here. Digital cushion is, is up here. Now remember, this frog, this periopal skin, this frog stay, this hoop capsule comes off in one piece. It is not the foot. This is the foot. And so it has to be supported in a specific manner in one way and one way only. And so <clears throat> over here on this wild foot, you see the ideal. Okay. Um, not all wild feet have this, but on this one, this is anatomically correct. Um, Molly's foot wasn't 
as good as it should have been. But we learned a lot from her because of this thing, you know, because I soaked that foot for, I don't know, two weeks. <laughs> and then it engorged this frog. And then I was going, well, what's that, you know, and stuff. Well, here's what happens. When you keep trimming the heels and trimming the heels, it slowly is pulling all this down to the ground. And eventually it'll take, you see this, this piece right here? This is the digital cushion in here. This is where it's supposed to stay. And the frog right here supports it and keeps it up there. But when you keep trimming the heels and it's pulling all of this down, including this cartilage here, everything, it's all one piece, pulling it down and under the foot, then it takes this piece here. See that piece right there? And it stretches it and it pulls it down to the ground so that your horse is walking on what looks like one bulb almost. See there? See how I did that? That's what happened to this foot. This is probably some horse somebody trimmed barefoot. Say we've been trimming barefoot long enough now for horse to be, horse horses are dying anyway. People are putting them to sleep because they're so lame. Um, but also uh, a lot of barefoot horses are getting old enough now. We've been doing it long enough. They're just dying of natural causes as well. Okay, so again, here's the back of the foot. This is the foot. Again, the hoof capsule comes off in one piece. See there? This little thing here, frog stay, grows between the bulbs and pushes up and supports this digital cushion that's up in here. Your bulbs are composed of digital cushion, by the way. Yeah, just here, I try and explain to people and try and show them uh, what's going on, trying to get them to see that inner foot. There's a frog stay starting. There's pretty good frog stay on this capsule here, see there? Um, ideally, though, this should not be like that. See, this also is a foot where the heels were pulled down behind. Okay, so here you see how uh, wide these frog stays can get. See there? Keep the bulbs, you know, spread apart. And here you see where he his heels are trimmed out, he's, his bulbs are pulled way under. Here it's getting a little better. And here is actually a lot better. You can see that uh, he's got a big old frog stay growing between his bulbs. Okay, now this will help you kind of see how it's fat. Okay, see the cartilage there? Well, this fat lines that cartilage. This cartilage is rounded and it's narrow. It's only, you know, so thick. And this fat just lines all of this under the back of the foot, see? Lines all this, that's just all digital cushion. All of this is digital cushion. This cartilage here, okay? When this pastern descends, see this cartilage is not attached. Do you see it there? You see how that's not attached? Okay, that's why it's so easy to be pulled down and bent and down under the foot and to be distorted and deformed. And it's just connected to this back here. See, 
That's fat. And you know, when you push on it, it bounces. Very soft. Okay, you see, your horse was not meant to walk on these. They were meant to be up off the ground, like so, uh, with the hoop capsule, keeping them up off the ground. Now, too, already I've started to distort this foot, but he had one heck of a foot on him, but I didn't realize I didn't know nothing. But you know, they, they come on and they tell us this stuff and we think they know. And so then when, when we learn that stuff, then we think we know too, right? So we talk like we know what we're talking about when we don't. You know, I cringe. I go look at some of them videos. You know, how how much I thought I knew that I didn't know. But I didn't know I didn't know. <laughs> you know, um, and that's going on with everybody, with most people. You know, they and once they teach a boy, you're so assured that you know this. And so... You know, and then of course, you know, they take, you know, then especially if somebody starts a business or they this or share a bunch of YouTube videos, you really think you know what you're doing then, you know. Um, it's just how people, how we can be deceived into thinking we know something we don't and that this happens at top levels in the world. Um, so, you know, that ought to really frighten you. If you think that they can't even get a horse's foot right, what else are they screwing up? Right? I mean, there's a lot more stuff, more serious, more complicated. All right? But they can't even get a horse's foot correct. And they've been working on it for how many years? See, and all they do is fall deeper and deeper and deeper into deception. Because what's going on is a deception. It is a deal where there's knowledge and people think they're right and they think it's true, but it's a big, fat, bald-faced falsehood. And it is, and the teaching of it does the exact opposite of what they say it does. So you're not saving horses, you're killing them. Slowly. So, you know, I just spent a lot of time comparing and trying to understand what was going on. Trying to understand this. So I could save my horse. Who is a terrible cribber. <laughs> I just ate it. Trying to understand, trying to figure it out. Um, you know, trying to be able to look at these feet and read them and tell what was wrong. Now, until my mare died, I did not, and I had heard of the frog stay and kind of knew, but did not know what it really was. Um, so then, you know, I spent a lot of time looking at feet, trying to you know, well, what's right? What's it supposed to look like? Um, how's it supposed to be? Um, what's it supposed to look like when it don't have it? Things like that. See, right here, you got very contracted heels. That's one thing the frog stay does. It keeps your heels spread apart because it keeps your bulb spread apart. See, here's your bulb. And what is that? That's digital cushion. That's digital cushion all in there. That whole thing is digital cushion. One piece of cartilage right there that has a kind of a shape like that. The rest of it, it is all digital cushion. This whole thing is digital cushion. I don't know. I mean, look at your bulb here. That whole thing is digital cushion. Well, Okay.
I don't know what that was. Oh, he told me to tie him up and do whatever I wanted. So I did. She goes for a walk with her dog. <laughs> uh, or go ride a horse, you know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, well, um, that's all I got for tonight. Do you feel like you understand it a little more? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Thank you. You know, this is something Thank you, you can Linda. do. Go out and palpate your horses. See where they, his thumb is there? Start feeling all in there and feel back in there and feel for that softness and that fat. And, you know, palpate those cartridges up in here. Feel them. Really just put your hands on that horse's foot and just get a feel of this whole bulb. See, this foot here it still has the hide on it. It only has the hair removed in case you didn't know. All right. So... You know, really just go out there and get your hands on that horse's foot and feel all that back in there. See, because this is all a part of your horse's foot. And this is all underneath your digital cushion. And then, you know, you'll feel the cartilage on the side of the foot here. So that's your homework. I okay? have found, I have found, so when I've got difficult horses, obviously, that don't like to pick their feet up because they're sore, if their hooves are just if their hooves are distorted, um, all I do is I press my foot on the side of that cartilage, and if they've got distorted hooves, that picks their feet up. But oh, if it's really? a good foot, it doesn't work. Really? Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I've been using it lately, and then I went to do it on my own horse, and he would not pick his foot up, and he's got I... good feet. And then I went and tried on another horse with good feet, <clears throat> and I did not work at all. I had to go back to just squeezing those tendons. Oh, so. wow. Well, that's, hey, yeah. that's good to know. That's handy to know, too. Could you repeat that, please, Rachel? Uh, so if, if the horse's feet are distorted and pulled under, so if I'm having trouble picking them up, because it, none of mine pick them up very easily sometimes because they're sore, um, I can press the cartilages with my feet or with the end of my rasp, uh -huh. and they will pick that foot up. But if it's a horse with good feet, like heel buttress and, and heel and everything, they, it does not work. Okay. Interesting, thank you. Yeah, yeah it is, it's very yeah. interesting. Or you can push your rasp on that, sounds horrible, but if you push your rasp on that coronary band, if they've got bad feet, they'll pick their feet up, but if they've got good feet, they won't. Yeah. must go back to using those tendons. I've done that. So I think it just shows possible inflammation yeah. um, or soreness. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that. And of course, just does not want to pick his feet up. You're trying to everything, you know. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll try this. <laughs> yeah, um, pretty much. But it only yeah. works, or you push it on their back onto their digital cushion. Uh -huh. Because, yeah, and that yeah. works too. But it doesn't work. None of those things work when they've got a good foot. Feet with heel buttresses. Well, that yeah. figures. That figures. Now, how many horses do you turn? Quite a few horses? Uh, so I've got my three here that I trim, and then I've got three at a place about an hour away. And then when we go home every three months, I have another four horses that I trim down there. I dropped a couple people because they moved away. But, yeah, I just do, like, family and friends. Yeah, and okay. More learning and... I've only yeah. charged a couple of people before, so uh -huh. I'm not a professional. And I'm trying to get into shoeing because I just feel like that's going to help me with a, yeah. a horse I'm doing at the moment that's really struggling to get past the wear. Uh huh. Are you on the Try tack straight? Are you on the tack horse yeah, shoeing yep. page? Okay. Yeah, okay. I asked about that uh, straight bar, the back, uh, the like the straight bar shoe. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm thinking yeah. of putting one of them on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, yeah, I think I think that's great that people are, you know, experimenting and doing shoeing and stuff like that. Because I think whatever it takes, you know. So whatever it takes yeah. for the for, I've just you got a, and for the horse. And, got a, 
yeah I've got to practice on my own first though like I've done it before but it was not correct I learned uh-huh. like real like up in the bush uh-huh. when I was up there so I want to learn like I want to do it with the tack trim now and see how I go and just yeah. the differences like I think I know how I'm going to do it but yeah it's just getting the balls to do it I think <laughs> yeah I know I I shod uh uh I used some ground control shoes and I did do nails yep. a few times um but on those ground control shoes you can use a okay believe it or not drywall screws and stuff so <laughs> right I was better with drywall screws than hammering nails I was just really nervous yeah. to hammer nails you know but uh, I never did any yeah. metal shoes. I just did ground control shoes two or three times. Yeah. Well, I feel like if I can do metal shoes, then when I, because we're, we're up in a certain place at the moment living, but we'll go back to where we are. And if I can get into shoes a bit more, then I can take, like, I'll still have to work full time, but it means I can help more horses yeah, down there. Absolutely. Like, and maybe get, have a bit of weekend pocket money from it. So Yeah, that'd be awesome. Pay for yeah. some better tools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. But, um, yeah, so, no, it's been a good journey. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> okay, well, you're welcome, dear. Thank you for caring. Well, and there's anybody... lots of, yeah, lots of horses benefiting on my side of things. So. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Definitely. Does anybody else have anything to say? No. <laughs> okay. Okay, hey, Linda. Well, hey, we'll see y'all next week. Thank you. Good. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Linda. Bye.